Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brian Sayre. Uh, I'm here with uh, Professor Waite uh, of the Common Department here at Kent Start. Um, today we're going to get to know her a little bit better, um, just so that you may get to know your professors a little bit better. Um, and, you know, maybe generate some interest in the communication program in general. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Lisa, you introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about your degree. Sure. Sure. Lisa Waite, Communication Studies, obviously, um, and in August I started my 29th year in education, and my MA is in Communication Studies from the University of Akron. Hmm. Yeah, so the rivals there. You yeah, a little, little bit. bit. Little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, but that's all right. Cool. Um, now is there a, a, when you took your master's, is there a, um, avenue that you specialize in, would you say? You know, the degree was more of a generalist degree, mm -hmm. but I kind of gravitated toward the interpersonal and the organizational focus. Mm -hmm. So I have um, kind of broadened and, and really traveled down that path. Yeah. And uh, it's presently where I have most of my research and most of the curriculum that I teach comes from right. the organizational track. Now, I've had you for uh, public speaking. You seem to like public speaking. Yeah, I do. Too. I like uh, connecting with audiences. Uh, I yeah. really do, yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, moving on, how, how would you describe your teaching style? I kind of know it, but uh, maybe you could give them a little yeah, uh, sure. a clue. Um, well, I guess my style or my methodology would be described as caring for the whole student. And I really try to get my students excited about studying communication and also reinforce to them that learning is not limited to a certain class or a certain semester or a certain time in their life, right. but to get them to enjoy and value the process to become lifelong learners. I think that's really important. Yeah. And do, you know, uh, just kind of a follow up, do you think uh, like teaching styles evolve over time? Do you, did you find yourself like changing, you said 29 years you've been yeah. teaching, I mean, do yeah. you think it, you've evolved over oh, that time? Oh, absolutely. I've yeah. absolutely evolved. Um, not just from when I was new to teaching, but semester to semester. Right. And I tell my students that joyfully, I learn as much from them in the classroom every day, hopefully, as they do from me. Right. And I think any educator who thinks that he or she has arrived um, really misses the whole point that we're trying to teach our students about becoming lifelong learners. Right, right. And yeah, you grow in your in your content and the discipline. You grow in your facilitation style um, in so many ways. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of evolving, um, my next question here: How do you expect communication will evolve in the next ten years? So, where do you see communication going? At? As, sure. As a whole. That's a really great question. Um, obviously, with mediated communication, social media, technology has just really taken the bar to the next level. Right. And it has changed how we communicate. Um, and there's a place for technology, but I have to tell you, um, there's a part of technology that makes me a little bit sad mm -hmm. because before people could read and write. They spoke and they listened, right. and culture and family traditions were handed down through the generations at the dinner table and around the campfire, right. and children learned about their grandparents by sitting on grandpa's lap, right. and students learned from their te teachers by being perched at the feet and listening right. to those stories, and now students are kind of perched in front of iPads and technology, yeah. and technology certainly has its place, um, but I... I fear a little bit loss of uh, what I call the spirit of one anothering. Mm -hmm. In other words, sometimes technology can make our transactions a little bit sterile, yeah. and I think it's difficult to express empathy right. um, in an email and so forth, but it absolutely has its place. And I think um, not just our communication students, but I think the general public, if you, if you aren't keeping up with technology, you're really gonna be limited in the ways that you can interact right. with people. I mean, think about it, 20 years ago, Facebook didn't exist, Twitter was a sound, an app was something you filled out for a job, right? right? Yeah. So um, yeah, it's gonna keep evolving and, and it's up to us to meet the challenge and stick with it. Yeah, I, you know, I grew up in sort of an era um, that I was kind of in between, you know, I, I still had that old school, 
you know, as you were talking about, but um, also as I got into high, late high school, it was, it, you know, technology was becoming a major, a major, uh, there was major changes going on in communication. So, yeah, um, absolutely. so it's been good to be able to kind of see both, both worlds and, and I agree with you. I think it's, it's, it can be really good and it can be bad at the same time. So, um, so um, just a quick uh, answer for this. Why do you think someone should acquire a communication degree and why Kent Stark? Sure. Both, again, really great questions. Um, the 21st century workplace is dominated by communication and that's not just because it's my discipline. Mm -hmm. And in addition to my teaching, I do uh, corporate training and development for Kent State University. And as well as my colleagues, we've had an opportunity to talk to HR professionals, local, national, and international, who all agree that employers can teach you kind of the nuts and bolts of the role that you were hired to fulfill. Right. But it's far more difficult for them to teach people how to be effective communicators. Right. And uh, we, you know, our global economy is growing. We are more diverse as a society. So rather than stress the importance of being a really stellar and effective communicator, I'd rather, uh, to a degree, stress the disaster that can occur if you are not. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it is just so complex. And, and you know, I, I kind of feel like I, I really like the Kent Stark campus. What, what would be your cells? Why to, to get a communication degree here? Like what? You know, makes that sure. stand out. Yeah. Well, um, I, I can say this uh, really not being uh, fully biased, but we have a lot of great institutions locally who have communication programs, and I'm very yeah. familiar with them. Um, but ours really does stand apart for a couple of reasons. First of all, the Kent campus and the department, as they continue to build the curriculum, are very, very cognizant and aware of giving our students the skills and the topics and the courses that are um, being sought after in yeah. modern workplace. So that's number one. Um, number two, we have a variety of paths, what we call tracks, that students can study. Right. Um, and I think though our secret sauce, what really sets us apart, is found in the applied track. There are three key courses that students take uh, in a visual communication design where they're learning, yeah, that's great, where they're learning um, to build logos and branding and websites right. and, that, and the second course is journalism and mass communication mm -hmm. where they're really becoming proficient writers, writing for uh, mediated communication, news releases, press releases, so that's important to right. be as well versed in the written word as you are in the spoken word. Right. And the third part of that, what I call that secret sauce, is the organizational communication, which of course organizational um, culture is far more complex than right. it ever was. And the beauty of what I believe we do here for our students in communication, by virtue of our curriculum and our research among the full-time resident faculty and even our part-timers, they bring you know, great competence to the classroom as well but we give students the tools to hit the ground running. And when you have something like the applied track uh, with the specialty courses, it makes students very competitive and it gives them the tools to be immediately marketable. And I think that's really critical. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are some really good answers. Um, uh, um, now, if we're, we're gonna kind of switch tones here and just, uh, uh, as I did with uh, Bates I, um, give us a uh, fun fact, something that's not, you know, necessarily professorial or uh, oh, give us a uh, fun fact or two about you um, to kind of give you a uh, personalized, you know, the professor role. A lot of people, I think students really come into it kind of like intimidated sometimes yeah. and I, I think they, it's good to see, you know, that, you know, you guys are, are human. Yeah. Oh gosh, we yeah. certainly are, yeah. um, and we make our share of mistakes. But you know, teaching is a very powerful platform that should never be abused. And I never, I fell into teaching by accident, and that's another story. But um, it, it's joyful. I find um, a lot of my success in helping other people find theirs, and I think um, I'm always challenged to. I guess share if I had to impart one lesson, just one out of all the great information that we like to bring to our students, that I would leave them understanding how critical it is to leave other people better off than when you found them. 
And right. I think, isn't that the essence of effective communication? Yeah. So I think that's important. Right. Um, I'm really drawn to people who are positive. Mm -hmm. I tend to draw my energy from other people. So I think uh, gratitude and a positive attitude yeah. is important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, hopefully uh, you learned a little bit more about Lisa, um, Lisa Waite. And uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook at Comet Stark. And uh, uh, follow us on Twitter at um, comment KSU Start. So thanks. See you.